but you're watching this program right now and you haven't been able to swallow. And you've had a lot of fear because you don't know what is causing it. You don't, there's been cancer in your family. There's been things going on, sicknesses that have been attacking your family members and you haven't been able to swallow very well. And you've been very afraid. And you're asking right now, you're asking the Lord for healing and you're saying, Lord, would you hear me? And maybe when you tell people they don't feel, they don't seem like it's anything to worry about, but you have been so worried, you're afraid to sleep at night because you can't, you can't swallow right, you can't breathe right. You're afraid to eat because you're afraid you're gonna choke. But right now the Lord is saying, I have come to bring you healing right now. I have healing for you right now. If this is you, then message in right now. Because there is healing available for you right now. And just put your hand right there on your, on your throat. Healing right now is available for you. And if you're watching and you're saying, well, it's my family member, it's my daughter, it's my... Then it's available for them as well. But healing has arrived right here tonight because God has heard your prayer. He has seen your fear. He has seen what you've been going through, the worries that have been in your heart and in your mind. And he's ready to break free right now. He's ready to heal right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, by the authority that you have given me in the name of Jesus, I declare healing right now. From the crown of their head to the soles of their feet, every sickness, every fear, everything that is causing limitation to their throat, everything that is causing limitation to being able to swallow and breathe right, to being able to eat right, Lord, I rebuke it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. You would clear their airways right now, Lord. You would clear their throat right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Healing healing right now healing right now in the mighty name of jesus healing right now and for those of you that are watching that are asking for healing in your back or in your neck or shoulders wherever it is you're asking for healing right now just place your hand right there and begin to receive your healing in the mighty name of jesus Father God, I pray for healing in your people. I pray for healing in your servants. I pray for healing in your ministers, Father God. Healing right now, right now, right now in the mighty name of Jesus. By the authority that you have given me, there is healing in the name of Jesus. I pray for healing, Father God, in my mother and our first lady. Healing right now. No more pain, no more aching, no more discomfort. Healing right now. Healing in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father God, for healing in our dancers, Lord, those that have been aching in their bodies, that have been limited, Father God, healing right now. Healing right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for your healing, God. I thank you for your healing, God. Hallelujah. word of the Lord says in the book of Psalms chapter 139 verse 1 it says oh Lord you have examined my heart and know everything about me you know when I sit down or stand up you know my every thought when far away you chart the path ahead of me and tell me where to stop and where to rest Every moment you know where I am, you know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. You both precede and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to know. The word of God says, see King David came before the Lord and he said, Lord, you've examined my heart. You've inspected the depths of my heart, God. You've scrutinized carefully the things that are going on in my life. You have, you've observed 
every heartache, every brokenness, everything that has gone on within me, Lord, you've observed it and you've investigated it. See, he looks into the deepest parts of your heart. He cares about all the pain and all the suffering that you've had to endure. He looked into the parts that have been chipped away by the mistreatment of the people around you. He knows about the broken pieces that people carelessly damaged within you. He knows about the loneliness you felt because of being abandoned by those that said they loved you and would never leave you. He knows how much your heart has been shattered by those that have abused you and neglected you in your life. King David came before God and said, God, you have examined my heart. You know every hurt, you know every wound, you know every scar and every, every pain that I've felt. And tonight the Lord wants you to know I have been examining your heart. I have been overlooking the things that have been going on within you. The things that you've held secret. The hurts that you never told anybody about. The moments that you cried yourself to sleep all alone thinking nobody cared and nobody knew. knew. God says I've been examining your heart. And just as we go to the doctor and he begins to examine our bodies he begins to examine trying to figure out the reasons for the symptoms that we're feeling he begins to examine trying to find out what is causing the problems within our hearts within our bodies he needs to find the root of the problem in order to find the cure for you to be better and in the same way, God is trying to find the damage that has been caused in order to find the resolution for your life. God is examining you to see the cause of the pain, the cause of the hurt, in order to be able to heal the wounds that have been caused. God is finding out how deep the cuts go in order to see if he can just patch it up or if there is surgery that needs to be done in your life. Many times we don't realize that the things that have been caused to us, the abandoning that was done to us, the times that they made us feel like we were nothing, the things that they said that crushed our spirits, many times we don't realize that it's causing so much damage to our lives that we can't function properly. We can't walk the way we need to walk. We can't move the way we need to move. We can't serve the way we need to serve. But God is saying right now, I'm examining your heart I'm examining those things that are going on in your life I'm examining I'm scrutinizing I'm getting into the depths of what they said to you and I'm taking back every word so that those words can't cause you any more harm I'm taking out the pain I'm healing the wound so that it can't cause any more damage to your life you haven't been serving because there's a sickness that is going on within your spirit. The joy you once had isn't there anymore. And the Lord is saying there's a reason behind it. And I'm examining you tonight so we can figure it out together and bring the joy back into your life. You haven't been walking the same in your relationship with God because of the pain that you feel on the inside. When I had knee surgery, I had to limp for a while. I couldn't walk the same. I couldn't run. I was afraid to jump. And maybe tonight you're saying, I've been afraid 
to do things. I've been afraid to jump into a new relationship. I've been afraid to serve in a greater capacity. I've been afraid to ha allow my family back into my life. I've been afraid of all these things because of the damage that was caused. And in a spiritual way, you've been limping along and you haven't been able to do what you used to do. You haven't been able to love the way you used to love. And you haven't been able to accept love the way you used to accept it. There's times in your life where you've been feeling like you don't even deserve it. Because of what's been done to you, you don't feel like you're worthy. But God says tonight, I'm examining your heart. And not only am I examining your heart, but I've come to fix what's been broken. I've come to repair the damage and the chaos that's been done to your life. There's a reason why you've been separated. There's a reason why there's been a distance. There's reason why there's been, it hasn't been the same for a while. And God says, I'm here to get to the bottom of it and figure it out. Because I want you back, says the Lord. I want you to be who you used to be. I want you to love the way you used to love. I want you to trust the way you used to trust. And the word of God says, you know my every thought, you know when I sit, when I stand, God, you know it all. You know everything, Lord. You know my fears. You know my failures. You know my insecurities. You know the anger that I've been holding on to. You know that I haven't been able to forgive what was done to me. You know the jealousy that I feel at times. The envy that I feel that I don't want to feel anymore, God. You know the hidden thoughts that I feel about, I think about myself. You know that at moments I feel like I'm not good enough. He knows it all. He knows everything about you. Every hair on your head. He knows every, every part of you. Every thought. Every moment that you wanted to give up. Every time that you felt like it would be easier to just stop trying. Every time that the enemy told you to just let your life go and give it all away. The times that suicide began to cross your mind, God knows about it. And he says, I'm here to heal those thoughts. I'm here to remove those things in your life that have held you back. He knows your past. He knows the mistakes that you've made. He knows you made some wrong turns along the way. He knows you did things you wish you could take back. He knows you've had some what was I thinking moments. We've all been there, church. He knows you are not so good of a person sometimes in your life. He knows that there was times you talked about other people. He knows you had some not so good moments, not so good decisions, not so good times in the past. And he knows that there's things that you're ashamed of that people know about. God knows it all, but he still loves you. And so many times in our lives, people want to come and make us feel like we're unworthy because of the things that we've done. They want to come and make us feel belittled because we made some wrong decisions or we did some wrong things or we said the wrong things. But God himself loves you so much that he says, I know it all and I still love you. I know everything and I still chose you. 
I know everything and I'm still going to bless you, says the Lord. I know how many times you messed up and I still have a purpose and a plan for your life, says God. In the book of Psalms, chapter 37, verse 23, it says the steps of the righteous are ordered by God. And if you stay, and if you go back to verse Psalm 139, it says you both proceed and you follow. That means he already has a plan for your life. He already has the path that he's called you to take. The steps of the righteous are ordered by God himself. He says, I have everything in order for you. I know who you're going to marry. I know where you're going to go. I know the job you're supposed to have. I know the blessings that are going to fall into your hands, says the Lord. He already has everything in perfect order. He tells us where to go, but many times we don't listen. We take a detour thinking that we know a better way and God is giving us the warning signs and saying, stay right here. Stay where I'm telling you to go. Stay the course I've called you to go. We take other routes thinking we know better. We take shortcuts and end up steering off the road. We get off track and we end up doing the wrong things in the wrong situations with the wrong people. The Bible says that he tells you where to stop. He tells you where to stop. He warns you, stop right here. He tells you this isn't good for you. He loves you so much that many times he even puts a pause in front of you. He even puts cones in front of you. He even puts barriers in front of you and says, don't go any further because he loves you so much. But in our stubbornness and in our our own fleshly desires, we keep on going and we make mistakes. But God is saying tonight, get back on the course and go where I'm calling you to be. Many times he flags us down and tries to say, stop, that's not good for you. But we think we know better, so we don't listen. He tells you ahead of time what's coming, but instead of listening to the warning signs, you speed up and try to get there quicker. He even makes, many times he makes your car break down And instead of being at a standstill, you just call an Uber. Instead of listening, you just try to figure out another way to get there. Instead of listening and believing what God is calling of you, you just try to call somebody else that can help you go another route. But God is saying right now, I have the path for you. I have the destination for you. I have exactly where I'm telling you to go. Listen to me, says the Lord. There's a story in the Bible in this book of 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 30. For God had blessed the woman with a son, and the son died. So the woman says, take me to the prophet, because I need to go see him. They take her to the prophet, and she said, my son has died. And the prophet says, go back. My servant will go with you. And she says, I won't go. And in verse 30, it says, but the boy's mother said, as surely as the Lord lives and you yourself live, I won't go home unless you go with me. So the prophet went with her and she received the blessing of the resurrection of her son. People of God, it's time for us to begin to say, God, I won't do it unless you go with me. God, I won't take the step unless you take it with me. God, I won't 
enter into this new season unless you tell me this is for me. God, I won't do it unless you tell me to do it, God. Many times we find ourselves in difficult times and in brokenness and in hard moments because we haven't listened to what God is calling us to do. But this woman says, I will not go unless you go with me. So even as you watch this program and you go into that job interview tomorrow, say, Lord, I won't go unless you go with me. God, I won't start this new, I won't start this new adventure unless you go with me. God, I won't enter into this season unless you go with me. I tried it on my own and it didn't work. It didn't work for me before. God, I need it to work this time. I can't end up where I was before. I don't want to live how I used to live. I don't want to be how I used to be. I don't want to be seen how I used to be seen. God, I won't do it unless you do it with me. Let this be the cry of your heart, people of God. Let this be the cry of your spirit that you say, God, I don't want to do it without you. I don't want to go without you. I don't even want to breathe without you, God. I know that you're examining my heart tonight, Lord. And I pray that as you begin to heal the wounds and you call me to new places and new relationships and new moments and new season and new ministries, I pray, God, that you would go with me. Right there where you are, just lift your hands and say, God, would you come with me? Say, God, would you go with me? God, would you show me the way? Tell me when to stop. Tell me when it's no longer good for me, Lord. Would you go with me, Father? Would you go with me, Jesus? I can't do it on my own, Lord. I need you more. More than yesterday.
Father God, we lift up Anthony before you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, you know where he is and you know what he's going through, Lord. And I pray, Father God, that you would find him right now and that you would just begin to bring restoration and strength to his life right now. I rebuke every bit of depression that is trying to take over him. And I pray that he would be set free right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, that he would be able to find joy and peace and strength right now in your presence. Be with him, God. Be with him, Lord. Father God, and right now I pray, Lord, that every person that is watching this program, Father God, that has been going through a difficult time, Lord, that you would just begin to heal their hearts. That as you examine our hearts, that as you examine us, Father God, that you would bring peace, that you would put the pieces back together and the brokenness that we felt, the damage that has been caused, Father God, that you would be the surgeon of our hearts and you would be able, Father God, to take out every hurt, every pain, every fear, every worry, God. We would find joy, we would find peace again. Thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for not leaving us in the depression. Thank you for not leaving us in the pain. Thank you, God, for giving us a way out even now. Father God, I won't go unless you go with me. Be with us tonight, Jesus. In your name we pray. We love you, Lord. Father God, and I pray, I, I pray that you all be blessed tonight. I pray that the blessings of God would just pour over your home, over your life right now. Pray healing in your body, in your hearts, and in your spirits. Thank you for watching this program on behalf of our pastors. They love you and they bless you. And until we see you again, have a wonderful week. And may the Lord richly bless you. Thank you.